Thank you, uh, Eddie, and thank you all for being here. Um, thank you, uh, Wynn, for the invitation. Um, it, it's a bit embarrassing, I must say, to be uh, uh, here with you uh, representing a country that still kills its citizens. Uh, but we are um, we are working to end that practice, and uh, I believe we will succeed. The um, I don't know that it's important, particularly how I got involved in it. I, I've been a um, I've been a social justice activist for many years, um, opposing uh, things that uh, tend to deny the value and dignity of each individual human being, and uh, those things have to do with racism and sexism and classism and all the other isms that we know so much about these days. But it seems to me, and, I, and I've said it too many times probably, um, that the, the death penalty in terms of our criminal justice system, the death penalty is like the lid on the garbage can. And once we remove that lid, uh, people of the United States are going to be forced to look into that rotten, stinking, maggot-infested mess that is our criminal justice system in general and be moved to do something to fix it. Um, I have been in too many prisons and on too many death rows and... Uh, worked on behalf of too many people who are no longer among us um, uh, to not have come to a place where, uh, and, and I'm, a, I'm a pretty easygoing, um, friendly guy, but I hate the death system. And I hate it for a number of reasons. Um, uh, you know, it is justified if it can be justified, it, 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 they attempt to justify it in, in the United States, uh, those people who support it and insist that it's in, important to continue to have this this uh, drastic uh, tool in their kit bag. Um, they justify it on the basis of its uh, deterrent value, they justify it on the basis of its effectiveness, they justify it on the basis of its uh, appropriateness. Uh, that uh, uh, Somebody just asked me earlier today in a at a radio or a television program, a program about an eye for an eye. You know, what does an eye for an eye mean? And I explained that an eye for an eye is an oft-used and abused phrase out of the Bible. The Old Testament, the Christian uh, Christians refer to it as the Old Testament. The Jewish people refer to it as the uh, teachings, the Torah. Um, but an eye for an eye is, uh, is a... a an easy way for people to say, well, but God said, you know, that we should we should do this. If somebody takes a life, that life should be taken. But I try to explain to people, first of all, that we don't gouge out the eye of someone who takes the eye of another. We don't rape rapists. We don't burn down the homes of arsonists. Um, we don't uh, we don't practice a like for like um, punishment. In, uh, in, in the West and certainly not in the United States. Um, and so f to justify it on that basis is really wrong-headed, aside from the fact that uh, Hebrew scholars have long uh, argued that an eye for an eye was meant to be uh, in favor of balance. When something goes wrong, there should be a, uh, an appropriate response to it, so that there is balance in the in the in the system, but not to suggest that uh, that people's lives should be put at risk because they have taken the life of another or uh, any of the other remedies that I suggested earlier. The 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 interesting thing is in the United States in the 40s and 50s, uh, the majority of the people opposed the use of the death penalty into the 60s. Um, and the, uh, the uh, politicians, really, I mean, if there's an under underlying reason for the continued existence of the death penalty in America, in the United States of America, it is uh, very simply political cowardice. Uh, politicians know that the system as practiced in the United States is racist. Politicians know that it is only used against the poor. Politicians know that it entraps the innocent. Politicians know that the innocent are killed uh, as a result of the practice. Uh, and yet they continue to insist that, uh, that it, it's appropriate. And, and the reason they continue to insist that it's appropriate is because it is, um, 
the, the people who are in support of the death penalty, I'm going to try to avoid political labels, but the people who are in support of the death penalty um, uh, are vicious in their support for it and vicious in their attempts to denigrate and attack and dehumanize the people that, um, that uh, oppose it. Uh, and uh, that has been carried forward in a number of, uh, number of uh, cases uh, in our country to the point that judges have been unseated, uh, politicians have lost their, their, their place in Congress or in the uh, uh, House of Representatives or in the Senate or in state houses. Um, Mario Cuomo being probably the nearest neighbor that you folks are familiar with who was a consistent champion for opposing the death penalty and, and lost his seat as governor for that reason. Um, so we, we uh, the politicians caved very simply. Um, and they did it because I believe in the late 60s, um, the politicians that were elected had, had grown tired of using communism and the accusation of communism as, a, as the shibboleth that they could uh, uh, tar their opponents with. So they decided instead to use uh, the death penalty. They used... The, 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 the phrase, of course, was tough on crime. We have to be tough on crime. And they were angry about what they called permissiveness. So they decided that we have to have a rigid uh, a legal structure that is responded to harshly. And that the most uh, effective and the most uh, uh, drastic way in which you demonstrate how tough you could be on crime is, is to be willing to kill. And Little by little, they won the day to the point that uh, the the support among the public for the death penalty rose from the uh, from a minority to a vast majority. By the middle of the 80s, where there were 85 percent of the American people who said, if asked, that they supported the death penalty. And it has only recently dropped as a result of the work that some of us in the abolition movement in the United States have done. It's only recently dropped. If you ask the simple question, do you support the death penalty in the case of a heinous capital crime, um, the answer now is about 61% of the people would say yes. But what the press doesn't report is that if you ask those same people, given a capital crime, would you prefer that the perpetrator, if convicted, receives the death penalty or life in prison without the possibility of parole, we are now at a point in our society where more people say life without parole would be the appropriate uh, sentence as opposed to the death penalty. So that, that's, a, um, that's a step in the right direction. I, 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 let me just say that I debated a district attorney in Los Angeles on television uh, about the death penalty at one point. And during a break, he said, uh, now you keep saying life without parole should be the option. And I, keep, I said, yes, that's correct. That's what I say. Um, that should be the ultimate sanction, not uh, the death penalty. And he says, but if, we, if you succeed and we do away with the death penalty, then what you're going to do is go after life without parole. And I said, yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the idea that human beings uh, are only uh, the dregs of society that need to be dispensed with as so much garbage is something that I find personally offensive. So uh, when we, over, the, over time, have made the case to the American public that uh, it is inappropriate to be killing people, taking innocent, or not innocent necessarily, some people guilty of heinous crimes, uh, out, of a, out of a cage, shackled, manacled, and overpower them and take them into a chamber where their lives are extinguished is, a, is an inhumane and anti-human thing to do. And, and uh, I'm, I'm with... Uh, Paulo Freire, the Brazilian uh, educator, who says to dehumanize another is to dehumanize ourselves. And I believe very strongly that what is happening in the United States of America today, the ugliness you see uh, before you on television and uh, read about in the papers, the assassination of uh, individuals by drone and the torture of human beings in, uh, in dark chambers, the, uh, the, the lack of which uh, should never have been in existence. Um, the, the grotesqueries that are being carried forward in the name of, uh, of the United States of America today, I believe, are the, are the direct descendants 
of this process of, of having your society told that it's okay under certain circumstances to take a life, to denigrate a human being, to destroy and dehumanize a person to the degree that ultimately we can we can eliminate her or him. Um, so we we have we have slipped, I think, into a terrible trough. And and what uh, what struck me in some reading recently was that um, during World War II, actually at the beginnings of World War II, it is said that the Nazis uh, would take Jews and Gypsies and communists and collaborators and all of the people that they, homosexuals, people that they felt were unacceptable. And once they were captured, they would line them up in front of a trench, a long trench, and some Nazi troopers would machine gun them so that they fell backward into the trench, and then a bulldozer would pour dirt over them into a, a so that it became a mass grave. And the Nazi high command at one point issued a statement that said they were fearful of the burdening of the soul of the soldiers who were doing the machine gunning. They were acknowledging the harm that is done to the individual who does the killing. Now, sadly, the Nazis found an alternative, and we all know what that alternative was, or those alternatives were. But the realization, I think, that the Nazi High Command gave voice to is what we in the United States need to be taking more seriously. Now, my organization, Death Penalty Focus, uh, has just hired a new um, executive director. Uh, she was the warden at San Quentin Prison, and she oversaw four executions, after which she resigned and uh, went to work as the director of the uh, corrections and so-called rehabilitation um, uh, uh, organization in the, in the state of California. And she resigned from that and finally came to us and said, if you're interested in having me be your executive director, I'm interested in the job. We are now coming to a place where people are coming forward with their experience and saying, this process is killing us all. And it is for that reason that we are succeeding in our, um, in our attempt to bring the public to the point where they will say no more. And that will, of course, then make it safe for these cowardly politicians to do the same thing. Um, and I will happily tell you that uh, as of, um, I've forgotten what day it is, as of yesterday, the day before yesterday, I announced at a press conference in Los Angeles, California, beside uh, District Attorney, former Los Angeles District Attorney Gil Garcetti and former Attorney Gen California Attorney General John Vandekamp, that we are going to put on the ballot in California in November of, of 2012 a repeal initiative that will say we will stop the use of the death penalty, we will replace it with the highest uh, uh, sanction being life in prison without the possibility of parole, and we believe we will eliminate the death penalty in California. Those of you who have been watching this subject, you're probably aware of the fact that uh, after years and years and years of no uh, uh, no opposition uh, since the death penalty was reinstated in 1976 after it was held un unconstitutional uh, in 72, um, after no opposition in the last five years, the state of New York, the state of New Jersey, the state of uh, New Mexico, and the state of Illinois have given up the death penalty, and we believe the ball is rolling in our direction and that California will be the next one after which will come Maryland, Connecticut, and you name it. And pretty soon it's going to be unstoppable. So thank you for your time.